Let's do this pizza thing. Look, 100%. This interview led to a, a new pizza shop in New York City. Hun- I'm, you, yeah. you, you have no idea. Let's go, baby. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Joe Russo, the legendary director of Avengers and many other great movies. And I'm Joe Isidori, the other Joe. Joe is the owner of Arthur and Sons in New York, one of my favorite restaurants in New York City. I've had the pleasure of dining with him in my establishment. He's a great friend. Uh, I love breaking bread with him, and I'm excited to be here to chat about my life and his life together. And food. And food. Yes. Joe, I want to ask you about um, your upbringing because food is a really important part of it. And I think it's what, you know, I want people to understand this sort of emotional backstory behind Arthur and Sons and what it means to you and, and how, you, how you came to the name for the restaurant and, and the style of cooking that's in the restaurant. Just tell me a little bit about like, when did you fall in love with food? I can't pinpoint that. So I was born into this, you know, I'm a third generation chef. I really don't know anything else. And I wasn't given the opportunity to learn anything else. At the end of the day, my father said, some people lay brick, some people fix shoes, we cook, get in the kitchen. And, you know, I I fought it a little bit when I was a kid, you know, growing up in New York. I was like, I want to be an artist. I want to do this. I want to do that. And he said, knock it off. Chicken Parmesan pays the bills. Don't forget it. Get in the kitchen. So I've been in the kitchen my whole life. And it used to feel like a little bit of purgatory for a while. My mother would come home and say, Joseph's being bad again. You need to punish him. He goes, I know what to do. Get in the kitchen, clean 100 pounds of galamad, clean 100 pounds of shrimp and 100 pounds of mussels. So I go in the kitchen, boom, 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 real fast. Finally, you know, he go to my mother and go, I don't know how to punish him anymore. He's getting pretty good at this, you know. So it got to a point where, you know, I was, it was just natural. I love that the punishment turned into your career. That I love. Yes, my punishment turned into my career. Your family pushed you into your 10,000 hours. Right. They, you know, you, that's right. You became an expert because it was part of the family business. I mean, in a lot of ways, like you said, you feel like you were forced into it. And then, you know, you pushed it inside yourself and turned it into your art and found a personal reason to do it. Right. I did. I did. When I first started cooking, you know, I just putting the food on a plate. Everyone only cares, a chef only cares about the food. But I got to know Gordon Ramsay as I was older. And he said to me, or he said to others, he said, you know what the difference between two stars and three star Michelin is? I said, what? He goes, two stars, you can win on the food. Three star, the entire restaurant is in control by the chef. Right. And that kind of motivated me to say, okay, not necessarily want to be a three star Michelin restaurant, but as soon as you walk in my restaurant, I need you to feel me and who I am and what my style is. Which my is what's is. amazing about Arthur's Sons. That's why I love it so much is because when you come in there, it is so clearly your personality. You are pervasive in every aspect of the restaurant, from being greeted at the door with the cocktails, to the menu, to you coming to tables and talking to people, to the energy, to the music. In a lot of ways, I feel like I'm in your bedroom, your basement bedroom when you were you know, 16 years old or whatever, listening to your yeah. soundtrack, eating your yes, food, you right? drinking what you would drink, and having the experience that you, you would want to have in a restaurant. And you've absolutely experienced that. Yeah. So there, there's no better, there's no better person to talk about it than you. I'm actually in the middle of service right now. I had to run upstairs to take this interview with you. Yes. I smell like Pride Galamad right mm-hmm. now. The music's pumping downstairs. I probably table hopped ten tables before I came, came here. Up here. Hey, how you doing, up Joe? This and that, and here we are. So I mean, if you you've experienced that, yeah. And, and Joe, let me ask you this question because I deal with audiences all the time as a storyteller. You tell a story to the folks in your restaurant every night, right? You tell it through food, you tell it through your personality, you go table to table. You just told me earlier you went to 10 tables before you came up here to do this interview. Why is that important to you? Why is that connection to your customers so important to you? It's a great question. So when I was younger, when I was cooking on the line, you know, I was always more interested in, I wasn't so interested in how I cooked the dish. I was interested in the, how they say, the gestalt of everything. And to me, it was more interesting to find out what was going outside and hear people's feedback and interact with them. So I trained myself in a way where I could be a little bit more of a maestro, as they would say, and be able to pull the strings from anywhere in the restaurant. Um, because for me, engaging with the customer was the 
my way of differentiating myself from other restaurants. That's right. In the, the day, veal parmesan is everywhere. Ravioli is everywhere. What's different about the veal parmesan at that restaurant or that restaurant? Well, in my restaurant, it's me. It's my personality. It's the story I tell. And when you bite into that food, it could be the same dish, but it will taste that different. It will feel different and it will give you a different experience. So it's very important for me, back to that Gordon Ramsay statement I made, to make sure that I control every aspect of the restaurant to make sure that my veal palm is better than the other guy's veal palm. And the only way to do that is to do that. That's right. And the re- reason I love going to your restaurant so much is, is for you, right? The food's amazing, but you, what you bring to it, you know, the time I spend talking to you at the table reminds me of when I was younger and the, the time I would spend with my family and the way we would share food and laugh. And you come out and your energy is infectious and your knowledge about what you're making and the care with which you, you present it to everyone. You know, it's the one meal and I took, I brought a lot of my friends. We came up, we were working hard. We were working on a movie. We came up together literally just to go to the restaurant because I'd heard so much about it. And, I have goosebumps thinking about it. <laughs> and we all still talk about it. And this was, you know, uh, six, seven months ago, but we all still talk about that meal. And it's because of what you brought to it. And and that's a special part of, of food is that personality and your connection to an audience. Well, it's the same way as you tell a story, too. You do the same thing through your own medium as well Is why people hang on the edge of their seats watching your movies for hours and hours. And then they watch it over and over again. We're both doing the same right. thing. We're both we're both we're both Italian Americans from from gridiron Italian communities that took our passions and our mediums and used it to our abilities to tell stories and make people happy. Because at the end of the day, that's all it is. Yeah. We're people pleasers. That's all we are. We're not, I'm not brilliant. You're not brilliant. We're people pleasers. And we do everything in our power to make people happy. You do it with your movies. I do it with my food. There's a lot of similarities and crossover. But at the end of the day, we're both Italian Americans. Family is number one, and making sure people are happy is also number one. That's the trying to recreate the feeling that I had as a kid, sharing things with people I loved. That's why we tell those stories, right? That's why it's there's a level of inclusion, right? I want people to come in under the tent together and to share in something. It's what we love so much about making those Marvel movies was, you know, you go look at the videos from the audiences and the way that they reacted to Infinity War and Endgame. You know, that to us, we could have never done anything better than that in our careers than, than what happened in those moments in those theaters with people together all over the world. Doesn't matter who you are, race, creed, color, doesn't matter whether you're blue or red. You're in that theater together sharing in that story in that moment. And it's, a, it's an incredible way I think, to include people um, and to build bridges between people because they're celebrating something that they collectively love together. Food can do the same thing, right? It brings people together. Absolutely. I still I still remember getting off of work and buying that midnight ticket to Endgame and calling my wife and saying, I'm not coming home. <laughs> I'm not going to a bar. I'm not hanging out with my cooks. I'm going to go to the movie theater alone with a box of popcorn and watch the Avengers. What time did you so, get out of there? Three in the morning? Yeah, yeah, I loved it. I was so, I remember walking down like, I think it was like First Avenue or Second Avenue back to my house. It was like 3.30 in the morning. Nobody was out. And I felt great after yeah. watching that movie. How, so, how was your theater? Was it crowded? Uh, it was actually, yeah. it was, it was, it was comfortably crowded. It was one of those places you could get a drink too. So yes. it was even better. That's good. Um, but yes, it was good. But, but like me pilgrimaging to, a, a, after a hard night's work by myself to watch your movie is just like you saying to the crew, get on a jet, let's go. We're going to go eat with Joe. And, you know, I'm very proud that you did that for me and I'm honored that I was able to go and watch your movie alone and at midnight uh, after a hard night's work and have one of the best nights ever. So my wife wishes she was there, right. but I told her, I said, this is a Marvel movie. Leave me be. <laughs> this is a, you know? it's a private experience for me. <laughs> That's it. Leave me be. I'm sure that you have a similar story, yeah. maybe not you know, pushed into it the way I was, but in the, in the end, we're both relaying a message as creatives, as people yeah. that produce things and provide a, a memorable experience. So 
how about yourself? Like, did, did you grow up thinking you were going to become the, one of the most famous directors in the world? No, not at all. And in fact, you know, it's interesting is I grew up in a duplex in Cleveland, Ohio, on 127th Street in Woodland. And it was me and my brother and my sister and my parents and my great grandmother lived downstairs from us. And, you know, she would cook uh, every Sunday. You could smell it coming up through the floorboards. And, you know, she'd probably start prepping on Saturday. She'd start cooking at like 7 a.m. So you'd wake up smelling it. The whole family would come over and eat. And uh, by whole family, I mean 20, 25, 30 people would come, squeeze into her apartment. We'd all sit around a table and eat together. And we'd tell stories to one another about what happened during the week. You know, people would, you know, the most entertaining people would tell the longest story and, you know, that's where I really learned how to tell stories was sitting around a table with my family, sharing her food. You know, it's funny is that there's a great recipe, a very simple recipe in The Godfather when he talks about how to make Sunday gravy, where it's a little bit of oil, you fry up some garlic, you throw in your tomato and your tomato paste and you put in your sausage and your meatball. That's exactly how she used to do it. And it's exactly how I make it. They're very simple. I don't like onions in it. I, that's how I do it. That's it. Just garlic, some sauce, a little bit of sugar, if you aren't using sweetened tomato sauce. But that's, it's really, we started as storytellers around a table, sharing food with my family. Then slowly over time, it evolved. I became a writer. I started writing when I was in high school. I went to uh, University of Iowa to study English and writing. Then I, did, I got into acting, got an MFA in acting. So everything was just pursuing storytelling in some capacity. Then I made a decision to transition to being a director because I didn't like acting. I didn't want to have a career where I was waiting around for somebody to tell me, you know, I have a job. I want to go create my own job. So that's my trajectory and how food was a very important part of me becoming a filmmaker. Tell me a little bit like, you know, we both love movies. Tell me like, what is, do you have a favorite scene in the movie that involves food? I know I brought up The Godfather. What, what, yeah, yeah. What's your I do. And it's more of a chef answer. Yeah. You know. So you got all those movies out there about chefs, and there's only two that I really gravitate to, and one is The Big Night. Mm -hmm. My father and I used to watch it all the time, and it's such a life lesson to learn as a chef. You sit there, and he was named in perfect risotto, and, and he would make it every day, and he would look into his dining room, and there was nobody there. And he didn't understand why that I make the perfect right. risotto. Nobody's here. And his brother came and said, Louis, Louis Prima's coming. Um, and, and, and it's going to change everything. It's kind of like Joe Russo coming to the restaurant. And I remember this angst in the, in the movie of them. So like their whole lives depended on this one person coming to taste the risotto. And then in walks the guy from across the street who my father would affectionately say is the scumbari guy, the guy across the street. He's serving, he's serving burnt, well done steaks and French fries. Yeah. And he had a line out the door, fancy cars, people swing dancing, and everyone would be so frustrated, like, look at this guy. He's serving crap. He's, he doesn't care, and he's packed, and he's rich. So I, I remember that movie. It's such a life lesson because at the end of the day, it's so true. You know how many Michelin star restaurants I had where I would sit there and scratch my head and say, I have Michelin stars, and my bank account is empty, and there's nobody in my restaurant? Right. It was baffling. Yeah. And my father would say to me, my father would say to me, Joseph, it ain't about foie gras and oysters. It's about finding a chicken parmesan. Chicken parmesan paste that builds. He goes, your problem is you got champagne taste on a Budweiser budget, he'd say. <laughs> Find your chicken parmesan. Be happy. Go out there. Take care of yourself and your, and your family. And, you know, I've always kind of lived by that mantra. How do I? So it's not about being the school buddy guy. And it's not about being the brothers that all oh, want to make the perfect result. It's about being somewhere in the middle. Um, so that's one of my favorite stories to tell. What's the uh, what's that special pie they make at the end of Big Night? Oh, it's was it timpano, right? Timpano, that's right. Yeah, with the pasta. Have you ever and made a timpano? I got to be honest, I never have. Can you make I one for have. me next time I come to Arthur? <laughs> I I can, I absolutely will, and it'll be my first time, and we'll film it, and we'll uh, we'll see if it's a you know a winner or a loser. There's a you know? there's a. <laughs> Worst comes worst, we'll have a really good big Z. There's a joint in Atlanta. I think it's called Storia Fresco. And he makes one just once a week. He makes a timpano. And we would send one of the PAs up there to get it. And then we cut it up and serve it to the crew. Food is oh my really God. important on our sets. It's either like, what's the best pizza in the city that we're in? What's the best Italian food we can find? Every Friday, the crew is so obsessed with food. It's part of uh, 
the requirement to work on a Rooster Brothers movie is you got to love food or you can't you can't work on the movie. Uh, but we take a request from people, so then we'll bring in food from everyone, someone's favorite restaurant once a week on a Friday, uh, um, and uh, everybody gets to talk about it, and we all share it together. And it's just like when we were kids with our uh, with our grandma, our Nona, uh, and you know we we celebrate and, and laugh and share stories uh, about the week around the food on set. So our our, our, you know, our work family is important to us as our real family because we spend so much time with them. And for us, it's just, again, that emotional connection we have to eating and to sharing. We try to bring that to set every day. Let me ask you, Joe, if you and I were to trade places, how do you think you would do on a set as a director? I think, I think I'd be pretty good. I, I think, think so, I, too. I think I think so. I think I can hold my own. I think I, I'd make some mistakes, but at the end of the day, I would rally the troops. I'd create culture. Um, I'd listen to others. And at the end of the day, I'd do everything I could to make a great movie. Yeah. And listen, you also, you know, you've been running kitchens for years, right? You've been running restaurants, yeah. right? All filmmaking is, all directing is, is making decisions efficiently, making quick decisions. And I always tell young directors this to say, look, you got to make a decision. Just be confident and make it. And then if it if it turns out you made the wrong decision, figure out how to make it the right decision, right? That's all your 100%. job is, right? Flow, everything's My coming at you. Plan. Thousands of questions all day long. Yes, no, yes, no. Do this, do that. Try that, try this. Uh, and you're not going to hit on all of them, right? But when they come no. back at you for a solve, be ready, be confident, and come up with the solve and move on. I tell everyone. Keep making decisions till you make the right decision. That's right. That's yes, all you exactly. need to know. We both That's have very, very similar philosophies. How would I do in a kitchen? How do you think I do in a kitchen? Right. Tell, so, tell me. I want to know. Can you take the heat of the kitchen? Uh, I, so I was a cook for about a, two years when I was 19 and 20 at an Italian restaurant in Cleveland that we actually used in the movie Cherry. So we shot. We went back years later and shot at this restaurant that I was a cook at. Now, uh, you know, I don't have a ton of moves. I make a good sauce that I learned from my grandma, right, from my Nona, and I make decent, you know, veal cutlet. I make a, a decent breaded chicken with a butter sauce and some capers, good salad. You know, I've got a very small roster of things I can do, but, you know, I don't, I don't have your, uh, your skill set for, uh, um, you know. Uh, you, you, sound like you, you sound like you. You're doing just fine. I'm coming over to eat, by the way. You just wrote the menu. I'm yes. on my way. The cutlet with the capers and the salad, you had me at capers. I'm okay, in. good. So I do a little anchovy uh, paste dressing. That's like my thing. Oh, come yeah. on. Let's go. Yeah. Don't forget the bread. Bring the wine. And as they say, now we can eat. Let's That's go. Right. I'm in. That's, right. That's it. I try to That's think, it. Joe, it's, personality is so amazing. What I would cast you as in a movie, you know? What would you want to be cast as in a movie? I, I have no idea. Yeah. I, I can't even answer that question. That's all on you. Uh, but uh, you listen, whatever. You, listen, the old adage: "Hey, coach, put me in." Yeah. That's all. You, that's all I need to know, and I will. I will deliver. So, so uh, if you worked in a restaurant, yeah, do you want to be the chef? Do you, what? What role would you want to be? Oh man, there's a lot of pressure being a chef, right? It's also what kind yeah. of restaurant, too, right? This is. I mean, that takes a lot of thought, but um, let's, well, let's back the question up. Yeah, what kind of restaurant would you want to work at or or be in, and what role would you like to play? It's a weird answer, right? Uh, the obvious answer is Italian, which of course I'd love to. But I love the sort of uh, I love the attention to detail and the camaraderie in a great sushi restaurant between the sushi chefs and the sort of discipline. And their connection to the customer when they're sitting there at the counter. It's another, you know, if I'm not eating Italian, I'm eating sushi. Because that's a, a great experience in a restaurant where you can interact with the chef across from you or the people next to you at the counter. I really enjoy that. There's no better connection than, you know, that amazing uh, omakase style uh, approach. Yep. It's like let the chef that, that do his me. thing. Let him work his magic. Get out of his way. That's it. It's all about what's in that one bite in front of you, nothing else. What's your desert island meal? Like, what, what are you taking with you? If you only take one meal, one food. One meal? It's going to sound crazy. Yeah. It's a ham and cheese sandwich with uh, Golden's mustard on Martin's potato bread. Uh, grilled or, or cold? This room temp. Room temp. And that's it. Somebody make that for you as a kid? Like, what's the connection to it? 
my mother. Your mother would make that. Right? Just greatest. I, so I was growing up. So as a quick story, growing up as an Italian-American kid, Mondays, guess what you got Mondays in your brown paper bag? You got a meatball sandwich from the leftover meatballs from the night before. Mm-hmm. You went to school with Nutella. You went to school with all these. Like, I used to get Tupperwares, and my mother would give me, like, uh, Fruta de Mare in it. It was like, I, kids would look at me and be like, this is crazy. So I said, go home. <laughs> and I would say, Mom, please, can I just have a ham and cheese sandwich? And the day she'd give me a ham and cheese sandwich, I can still taste that first bite and going, oh. And... Till this day, I will make myself one, and I still have that feeling. Mm-hmm. So, it's a comfort food for you. Things. Yeah, it, it really, really is, and it has to be American cheese, no cheddar cheese. They tell everyone cheddar is not better. Yeah. Cheddar is never yeah. better. Yeah. American cheese, please. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, ham and cheese sandwich. Oh, and and uh, I would prefer a Miller High Life to wash that down. Yeah, add a little Miller High Life. Yeah, I think you get one beverage and you get one food item. That's it. So you, you yes, yes. What about you? What, 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 what is yours? I mean, p- pizza is my thing. My brother and I have this thing called Pizza Film School that we do, where we order pizza from different shops all over Los Angeles, and then we sit and talk about movies. And you know, so pizza's always been my thing. My grandpa, in addition to making those incredible ravioli, he also made an amazing, you know, room temp pizza with just sauce and bread, oil, salt. No cheese on it. Sometimes if you, there was cheese, you just sprinkle on a little Romano on top of the bread, and that was it. And that, again, was emotional for me, right? So it was this, you know, I have strong memories of it. And that really uh, made me fall in love with pizza. So you never know. We might have to open up a pizzeria soon. I'm in. I was just going to say, <laughs> call me if you're doing it because I'm in. Yes, Chef. Yes, chef. I will definitely call you. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, I, any time I can spend with you, anything I can I can do with you is amazing. I, from that day I got the phone call from your team saying Joe Russo's coming to eat at your restaurant. My family and I still talk about it to this day, and it was just I've had a lot of celebrities come through, a lot of people come through, but you definitely, my friend, took the cake. I, by the way, I love that because I remember I think I had to call you personally because my assistant, you did. my I assistant was like, was like no, I don't no, think no, he no. thinks you're, he believes you too, yeah. Uh, and I had to call you and you were in the car or something. I said, no, no, Joe, it's me. I really want to come in. I've heard so much about the restaurant. I, I'm a, the kind of guy where I don't want any wasted meals. I mean, my waistline, I'll tell you, yeah. I don't like yeah. wasting a meal. And if there's a great meal somewhere, I will travel. I don't care where it is. I got to travel halfway ac- uh, across the world. I want to have that meal. I'm all about collecting experiences and food for me is a huge part of, uh, of that mission. Well, we shared we shared a great experience, and uh, we have many more to come. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Chef. You got to go back. You got to get back uh, back downstairs. And- I, I've got to go back to work. Yes, you got to right. go make a movie. I got to go cook veal palm. That's right. <laughs>